Good evening and welcome to East Lothian Council's Instrumental Music Services first digital concert. We're very much looking forward to sharing our music with you this evening and thank you very much for joining us. My name is Jonathan Gaughan and I'm the team manager for the Instrumental Music Service. The piece we're going to play this evening is entitled Lass Flulock and is a number of Scottish tunes arranged for orchestra by Liz Woodsend. Liz is one of our piano and keyboard instructors and as well as being a superb instrumental instructor she's also a fantastic composer and arranger so thanks Liz for the great piece we're very much looking forward to performing it. We're delighted to be joined this evening by our friends from Royal Air Force Music. The musicians from Royal Air Force Norfolk in London put together webinars and have had Google Meet sessions with the young people in preparation for this evening's performance. It's been amazing to come together in these times of separation to prepare for this piece and we're very much looking forward to showing you the incredible results now. Before we do, however, I'd like to take this opportunity to speak with Flying Officer Mike Parsons, the Director of Music of the Band of the Royal Air Force Regiment. Good evening, Mike, and thanks for joining us. No, it's a pleasure, John. Great to be working with you again. Thanks, Mike. It's been amazing to have you all here this week virtually. What a superb opportunity for our young people to collaborate with the professional musicians from Royal Air Force Music Service. If you would, could you please tell us a little bit about Royal Air Force Music, about the band and what you do? I appreciate that may be a little bit different at the moment, like many things, with everything that's going on. No, of course. So Royal Air Force Music consists of three full-time bands, the Central Band of the Royal Air Force, the Band of the Royal Air Force Regiment and the Royal Air Force College Band. And then we're supplemented by the Salon Orchestra and the Band of the Royal Auxiliary Air Force as well. And in total, that's over 170 full-time professional musicians. And people often exit, uh, ask, why do we have music in the Royal Air Force? And essentially, we exist to represent the Royal Air Force at home and abroad, to represent its professionalism through musical excellence. And I feel that we do that in several ways. Uh, one week, we could be performing at Buckingham Palace, changing the guard, or up doing the Edinburgh Tattoo in front of thousands of people. And the atmosphere at these events really is something to behold. The next week, we could be lucky enough to be doing a major public concert for charity at one of the great concert halls in the UK, the Royal Albert Hall, Birmingham Symphony Hall, or the Sage in Gateshead, for example. And these are jobs that the full band would do. But then the full band can then split down into smaller ensembles, such as an 18-piece big band, or a 10-piece woodwind or brass group. And from there, even further into various quintets, such as a classical woodwind quintet, or anything from a jazz group to a dance band. So you can see that the kind of groups that we operate in vary incredibly. But you know, also, John, we also get to play a great variety of music within that as well. Of course, we do the traditional marches that we're well known for, but then we also do great classical transcriptions, symphonic windbound repertoire, jazz, pop, dance, funk, you name it, we play it. And I believe it's that variety of music that really makes this job unique amongst professional musicians. And for me personally, it was one of the great attractions of the job, alongside the other perks of being in the Royal Air Force, of course, such as the travel, the sport and the adventure training. So there's only one thing I've not really mentioned yet, and that's the community engagement side, which, of course, we're doing today. Now, under normal circumstances, this would take the form of doing school concerts anywhere around the UK. And we always enjoy doing these as some of our favourite jobs because the reaction that we always get from the children is absolutely fantastic when they hear the live music. Clearly, we're quite restricted at the moment in our travelling and the live performances that we can give. But that's why this project is so great, because in this time of separation, music really is a great tool to bring people back together again. So, you know, we're so proud to be supporting music education in this way today, having the skilled professionals of the Royal Air Force work alongside the talented youngsters all over the nation. Could you just tell us a little bit, please, about yourself, about your journey? I know from my time in the Royal Air Force, whenever we worked together, you were an oboist, um, but could you tell us a little bit about where that all started 
and how you ended up being the director of music for the band today. Of course. So as you say, I did start out on the oboe and piano when I joined the Royal Air Force, but they weren't the first instruments that I took up, actually. Okay. Uh, when I was a lot younger, my mum played the flute, so it was only natural that I would learn a few tunes from her. So aged seven, I started lessons on the flute and also the piano as well. But I'll tell you a funny story I recall from when I was aged 10. I grew up in Manchester and I recall being sat at the back of what must have been a 30 strong flute section in Thameside Elementary Wind Ensemble. And I'm thinking to myself, I could be playing absolutely anything here. No one would hear me, no one would care. Which, by the way, is completely the wrong attitude to have. But then I look next door to me and there were only two oboe players and they had all the cool tunes and everyone could hear them. So I think, right, that's what I want to play. So that's how I ended up taking up the oboe, aged 11 instead. And I actually kept all three instruments going for a little while, but ultimately I had to let the flute go because I just didn't have time to practice all three of them. So I carried on playing the oboe with Tameside and Stockport Youth Orchestras, as well as the Adamson Military Band. And this really taught me a valuable skill of ensemble playing, as well as being great fun socially, of course. I then went on to do music at GCSE and A-level before going on to study at Durham University. And it's here that I really learnt the application and the dedication it takes to become a professional musician. And by the time I'd finished at Durham, I decided I wanted to join the military as a musician, of course. Now, I had a lucky escape. I almost ended up joining the army, but fortunately, the Royal Air Force came in first with a vacancy. So, age 21, I ended up joining the Royal Air Force as a musician. A very proud moment. Now, for a lot of the young people watching today, they'll be thinking, well, 21, but that's pretty old. But actually, for a musician, 21 is nothing. You've still got so much to learn. So, I wanted to carry on progressing as a player. So, I did a playing diploma. But then, I also wanted to learn about the other aspects of music. Conducting, arranging and composing. So, through RBF tuition, I learned about all of those aspects as well. And I've carried on doing them to this day and really enjoyed it as well. And then earlier this year, I was very privileged to be selected as the next director of music for the Band of the Royal Air Force Regiment. So that's how I came to be talking to you today, John. Brilliant. Thanks, Mike. And uh, congratulations, of course, on your appointment. Exciting times for yourself and for the band. Before we move on to this evening's performance, could you please just offer our young musicians some words of advice or anything you'd like to say to them as they go forward at this time with their music making? First of all, the most important message for any music making is to enjoy it. That's why we all get into it. But there are a couple of ways that any musician can help enjoy their music just a little bit more. One is through good quality, regular practice and the other is through developing good listening skills. So good quality practice will help you get better as a player to be able to play more challenging works. But good listening skills will help you become a better all-round musician. Listen to the person next to you. Listen to the person on the other side of the orchestra. What are they playing? How are they playing it? And how can you react to it? And ultimately, when you can play great music as part of a great ensemble to a high standard, that's when you're really going to get the most out of your music making. So I'd like to wish everyone involved in today's project all the best. It's a really great thing to be involved in and congratulations to you all. Uh, we're really proud to be involved in it as part of the Royal Air Force as well. Thanks, Mike. I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much to yourself for joining me for this interview. I'd like to thank the members of Royal Air Force Music for their willingness to be involved in this project. It really has been incredible and I think the results in a few minutes will speak for themselves. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the instrumental instructors, parents and schools for supporting the young people in this project. And of course, I'd like to say congratulations, a huge congratulations to all the young people who submitted their recordings. It really does look and sound incredible and what a great thing to be part of. So I'm just going to hand you over now to Flying Officer Mike Parsons and Royal Air Force Music in their band room at Royal Air Force Northolt. Thank you very much.
Welcome to the band room at REF Northolt. You're listening to Royal Air Force Music Services, and in collaboration with East Lothian Instrumental Music Services, we're delighted to perform for you today The Last of the Lock by Elizabeth Woodsend. Mm-hmm. 